Welcome to this video series for people who are new to Postman. In this video, we'll take a look at how you can create your first API tests by using Postman. What is API testing to begin with? To put it very simple, you want to make sure that the interaction that you have with the API works as you expect. So in our very simple scenario here, we have created a repository. And in the first instance, we can manually test an API by creating different requests and inspecting the responses that we get back. So in this very simple scenario, we have a status code 201, which indicates that the repository has been created and we can take a look at the response body and tell from this information that everything worked well. We can also perform API testing by creating assertions that are validated once the request has been sent. So for example, we can validate by writing a piece of code that the status is 201 or that the name of the repository is as we have indicated it. When doing API testing, we often need to work with multiple requests and to put them in a specific order which mirror a workflow. And all this can be integrated using automated tests and doing continuous integration and deployment pipelines. In this video, we're gonna get our hands dirty and write a few Postman tests. And don't worry, this will be quite easy, I guarantee. As you can tell, manually inspecting the response is time consuming. And we want to go into the direction where we can automate some of the things that we manually do. And we have already played with this API and we know that it's working. But let's go ahead and create some tests. In order to do this, I'm gonna go to the tests tab. And just in case the snippets here are not opened, you can simply click on this button here and it will open a list of snippets that we'll be using. Scrolling down the list, you will find here status code, code is 200. So if I click on that, this code will be generated here. Now we know that our status code is in this case 201. So we need to change that here and this will be the test title and here as well, because this is the value that will be asserted. So what Postman did is to generate this test for us. And if you look at this test, you will be able to actually read it. It says pm.response to have status 201. So anybody looking at this test will be able to understand what is this test about and what does it do. So it's quite, quite easy to read. Now let's go ahead and create another test, a test where we evaluate something from the response body. We have specified that our repository should be called hello-world. And this is something that is reflected back in the response and we have here the name hello-world. In order to create that test, we're gonna go to the snippet response body JSON value check. And this will generate the following piece of code. The first thing, is simply parsing the response as a JSON and saving the content in this variable, JSON data. The next thing we do is create an expectation. And we're expecting that the response body, JSON data, and we're gonna replace value with name, will equal hello-world. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste it here. And we can name the test as we want, usually in a way that makes sense for us. Okay, so that's about it. We have two tests. And the next step would be to run the request again and to execute the tests. Every time we run this request, the test will be executed after the request has been sent and the response received. And you can see pretty easily that there's a problem with what we have created because now both our tests have failed. And this is a clear indicator that something hasn't worked as we had expected. So first of all, the status code was not 201. We can see that the status code is 422. Additionally, if we look at the response body, you will see that there's no property name 
which contains the value hello world. So this is the second test that failed. Now it is very important when you create tests to make sure that they actually fail because nobody wants tests that never fail. They provide absolutely no value. Now, in order to understand what has happened here, we need to look at an error that we have received here in the body. And it says that name already exists on this account. The problem with that is that we tried to create another repository with the exact same name. So if you provide here hello world 2 and adapt our tests with this value as well, resend the request, we'll see that both our tests are now successful. The status code is 201 and the repository name is correct. As you have seen previously, we have a static name here. So we want to be able to create as many repositories as we need. And we don't want to change the name of the repository all the time. So the next step would be to introduce something dynamically to this request, to have something added to our repository name that changes with every request. To do that, I'm gonna go to the pre-request script. The pre-request script allows us to create some JavaScript code that is executed before the request is being sent. And what we want to do here is to generate a value, a random value for our repository name, and put that in a variable and use that variable in our request. So I'm gonna define a new variable called random, and I'm gonna use a JavaScript library in order to generate a random string. Without going into many details, this will generate a random string and that will be saved to this variable. And in just a few seconds, we're gonna take a look at exactly at how this random string looks like. Now, the next step would be to create a new variable and that will contain our repository name. And the repository name will be composed of two things. Let's call this my repository. And additionally, we are gonna add this random string to the name. And finally, we'll need to set this as an environment variable. We we'll have here a snippet which says set an environment variable and we're gonna name the environment variable repository name just as the variable, but we definitely don't have to. Now going back to the body, we are gonna use double curly braces and specify this variable, which is repository name. Finally, we need to adapt our test and we need to make our test dynamic as well. So we need to replace this part and this time we need to get an environment variable. And the snippet is here. And I'm gonna make sure that this is within the equal function. Let's resubmit this and see how it works. If you open the body, we can see that the name that we have provided isn't exactly what GitHub expected. So for that reason, there's still a small difference between what we expect and what we actually create. The name of the repository apparently cannot contain any spaces and we have some spaces here. That is quite easy to correct and we can replace any spaces with a dash. And let's retry this request. And now everything works fine. So now every time we create a repository, a random name, a random string will be assigned. So in this video, we have replaced this manual process of us checking the response and the status code. And we have documented the desired functionality by writing this to test. One that is testing the status code and the other one that is inspecting the response and looking for something that we have set. If you have any issues getting this to work, Take a quick look at the video description for some troubleshooting ideas or feel free to post a comment in the section below. See you at the next video.